Uh, hey, Christian, thanks so much for coming to the show. We really appreciate it. Uh, I hear you're back at Red Hat. I uh, I had, you know, I was really surprised to learn that, whatever, a few weeks ago. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And you said this was your what week? This is my third weekend. Nice. So, yeah. Nice. The third weekend, and they always they already have me flying out, so it's uh, <laughs> it's like putting on a, an old pair of comfortable shoes, I would say. Right, right. Yeah. Well, or a whole bunch of comfortable swag. Maybe. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like I didn't really have to buy anything new, so <laughs> right, I, right. I had it already. You, you were already branded. Uh, yeah, it's pretty awesome. Uh, and so you came back to do which, which group are you working with, or what yeah. are you working on? Yeah, so I'm in the um, cloud services BU. Yep. Now, so uh, working on uh, managed services based on Red Hat technology. Nice, nice. Yeah, um, one of the things I think people don't really appreciate uh, very much, uh, like as a developer, is like how nice it is to not have to build everything yourself. Yes, yeah, um, exactly. And, yeah. and like, and having somebody else running it is uh, is very, very useful. Um, it's funny because I work with the students all the time, and they, uh, you know, when when they're presented with like with a project that is like build this website or whatever, it does not occur to them to go like, okay, well, I can get this functionality from this API over here, yes, I can yeah. get that functionality from that API over there, and I think it's only as you get some seniority that you start to figure that stuff out, but uh, it's really, you know, like it's so much better than, you know, just kind of write the little bit that you actually care about. Uh, it's, yeah, it's yeah, nice. and, yeah, exactly, and let, and let you know, um, someone else take care of like the heavy lifting. I right. actually talked right. to someone yesterday who was, um, uh, who worked for a, uh, uh, so fintech company, yep, and uh, they had to do everything in house. Yeah, and now the, the uh, this guy works for um, some you know web company, right. right? So right, and he's like, "What? We can run you know you know stuff in the cloud? Like yeah. this this is this is so much easier. <laughs> right, right. This is so much easier. Like I don't have to take care of you know every single little aspect of every single little thing. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it is it's definitely um, uh, there's definitely advantages to it, right? For right. sure. I, I still remember when I was in consulting, you know, I did a lot of financial services work um, and it was kind of early days of the cloud and it, even even the later ones. But you um, it was so funny when like having a conversation, you know, like sales or whatever, of like trying to convince a, a financial services company to go to the cloud. And, uh, and they'd be like, but what about the security? And I'm like. Uh, well, why don't you go and do some sort of audit on your uh, you <laughs> yeah, know, on your yeah. firewall and find out how many holes you actually have yeah, yeah, exactly. for all the partners over the years? It might actually be more secure to be yeah in the to be in the cloud because yes, then at exactly. least you have some awareness of what you're setting up again. Um, so uh, yeah, so I've been I've been a big fan <laughs> for a long time. Um, so, uh, but your real thing, as we all know, uh, is the GitOps thing. I actually uh, yep. just referenced you in my learning path. To say you should go check out. Uh, oh, now I just blanked. Uh, get up. What was your show? Get up. Oh, get up. Guide to the galaxy. Yeah, yes, that's it. That's I was right. like, yeah. I blanked on the middle words. I was like, yeah. get ops and galaxy. I yeah. can't remember. That I, I think it's too many syllables. Or yeah, maybe. maybe, that's what maybe. That. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, it's a good. Um, it's a good reference to a nice uh, tech book. You know. Um, have you actually read uh, Hitchhiker's Guide? Yes, yes, yeah, I have. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Um, so at the end of the show, like when we're to do our last episode, it'll be forty-two, right? And so, so that <laughs> was, you know, that was my last episode on the level of oh, power. Oh yeah, was it's also it's 42. thirty-two. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so yeah, it was it was funny that it, it wasn't even intentional. I just yeah, it just, it just happened, happened to, to be out. yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah it was serendipitous really that it was yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> so uh, so tell me a little bit about like what kind of why GitOps? Like, what's the point of you know? You know, it's kind of like, what does it even mean? Plus, like, what is it, you know, what's yeah. the point? Yeah, yeah. So anytime I, I talk about GitOps, uh, especially, like, if I'm just, like, giving an elevator pitch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so to speak, right, is I always start start with DevOps, mm -hmm. right? Because, like, DevOps really has um, um, has been really a movement, right? From, right. From, like, you know, it, it, I, I know it's been years, but we're still talking about it. Right. Um, because it's, you know... Um, you know, it's a culture. It's 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 uh, it's it's a way to do work um, to expedite your development process, mm -hmm. and not a lot of people are there yet. Like even even today, right? Like it's just because it's just a, such a cultural shift, right? Right. And um, I always start with DevOps because like GitOps isn't um, um, isn't like a replacement, right? Oh, yeah. GitOps yep. get, get, get isn't like another another thing like get uh, like DevOps is, uh -huh. right? Like GitOps is DevOps, right? right. I, always, I always say that that GitOps is um, DevOps actualized. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like an implementation. It's of like DevOps. an implementation, yeah. 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 So like I always say that um, DevOps is the culture, and GitOps is how that culture looks like in practice. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. I can see that. And so um, you know, it it all started with this um, uh, 
um, you know, with this whole infrastructure as code, right. kind of software as code type type of things. I mean, you know, um, I think most of us remember using things like Puppet, right? Mm -hmm. I was a big chef guy, right? Yeah. I was using Chef a, a lot. Um, and it, it all really kind of started there is like, okay, well, like I kind of want to prevent drift at a massive scale, right? right? I have like all this stuff um, that I want to make sure it's all, um, um, you know, all in sync and, and everything is how I, how I want it to be. And so I think as the um, industry has progressed, right, like we, have, we saw this whole, you know, the, the whole PaaS war, right, between right, like, right. Like, like Mesos and, um, you know, OpenShift, right, and uh, um, Cloud Foundry. And then, uh, the, you know, Player2 has entered the, the fight, right, with, with, with <laughs> Kubernetes and essentially right. like it's won, right? Like right. I, 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 don't, I don't think anyone will fight me on that, on that, that opinion that Kubernetes has won. Um, that war. Yeah, and, no, totally. I actually, we, I was yeah. talking to uh, Berkus about the same thing. Oh, Berkus, like, yes. We were yeah. talking about like the, you know, kind of the history of Kubernetes a little bit and like, you know, <clears throat> he did a really good example of like, it was kind of in the middle and, um, mm -hmm. And it was like, oh, I can't remember his exact phrasing, but he said something along the lines of, you know, is it the happy, oh, that was it. Is it the happy medium or, you know, the nothing to no one kind of thing, yeah, you know, yeah, like, and yeah. nobody knew, right, at first. And then, but it turns out, like, it looks like Kubernetes really was the happy medium and it was, it's where everyone was kind of drifting towards. Yes. Uh, yeah. And it's, it really has just kind of, now it's the thing. Now, know? now but, it's the thing, and I think with with Kubernetes came with like a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. um, especially now with everything being like, oh, we need to shift left, right? Like everything needs to be, you know, started at development cycle, and really and when they're it, super short, yeah, 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 yeah exactly, yeah, yeah. 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 and um, and that that became a challenge because developers really don't really care about infrastructure. Yeah, I mean, right, ju right. just like they don't really. I mean, or don't want to care. Oh, they don't want to care. Not yeah, necessarily yeah. they don't care, yeah. is they don't want to care right. about it, right? Like they just, they trust, you know, they, they, they want a level of trust. Mm -hmm. And so um, GetOps as a practice really developed from the, um, a few things, right? One, SREs, mm -hmm. just wanting, you know, to keep the lights on, right? At massive scale. Right. Um, and this is, and, and the, um, the phrase GetOps was coined by uh, Alexis Richardson, right? From WeaveWorks. Oh, and, I don't think um, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It, it was coined by uh, Alexis Richardson at WeaveWorks, and uh, the story is that the um, they lost a whole region oh, in, yeah, in, in AWS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's never good. <laughs> yeah, that's never good. Yeah, <laughs> right. uh, someone fat figured a config, right? right. And and um, you know the classic story, and they took that a, a um, entire region, and they were down for like I don't know twenty minutes, mm -hmm. and they came back up, and which is and, and I think this is indicative of Alexis Richardson. He's um, they said, uh, the first question he asked was, why are we up so soon? Oh, interesting. Which yeah. is funny. Usually yeah. a CEO is like, why were we down? Right. He's right. like, why did we come up so soon? And they were kind of explaining the process they had. And um, and he goes, oh, that kind of, that's like GitOps. It's like everything, you know, there's a single source of truth right. for everything, right? Which yep. is where the Git comes from, GitOps. Right. Um, and they you know developed internal tools, and which ended up being Flux. Uh -huh. And you know right around the same time, um, Intuit was developing uh, Argo, right? The Argo mm -hmm. project internally at Intuit. You know, they, they, they acquired Appletics and, you know, that development team came up with um, the Argo project, which was a series of tools, but one of them being Argo CD. Right. And Argo CD is really the, um, um, a way to abstract Kubernetes away from the developer. Right. And that was the point of Argo CD. And that, that's kind of... Um, um, why it's so popular? Um, you know, there's there's two schools of thought, right? Like, uh, you know, we're we're in a we're in a Ford, right? Um, mm -hmm. There's you know, like I say, GetOps is muscle cars, yeah. And yeah. whether you like Chevy is or, or Ford, it, it, you know, like you just like muscle cars, right? So kind of like you're either an Argo guy or you're a Flex guy. Okay, gotcha, <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. But like you're 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 you're, you're a fan of GetOps in general, so. But much uh, like Ford, because we're driving around in a yes. borrowed one, we of course like Argo. Oh right? yeah, 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 of yeah. course, right. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and of course, we like Argo. Right. So um, just for, for the simple fact that it that it abstracts that. Um, that complexity right, away right. from the developers. So but now, I think well, kind of one of the things that you're kind of getting at, right, mm -hmm. is like uh, one of the things that is sort of like the thinking behind Kubernetes is almost taken out of config management in this idea that instead of just, you know, basically, you know, setting up a thing, we describe a thing the way we want it to be. 
Yes. Right? Yeah. And then we let the system make it true, right? And I think what's so compelling about like GitOps, right, is that you have um, you have a way to articulate it in a way that everyone agrees is the is the right one. You know, so whether it has bugs or whatever, at least everybody knows where yeah. it's all coming from. Yes. You know, which is yeah. huge, right? Yeah, exactly. And, um, you know, and you, you, you touched on an interesting point because I, I was uh, at GetOpsCon yesterday. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, listening to all the talks and, um, you know, someone brought up, you know, obviously um, Kubernetes, right? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, we're at KubeCon and, you right. know, GetOps is, that's the cornerstone, right, where it came from. The, um, you know, the the idea of the promise theory came up because of Kubernetes, right? Yep. Kubernetes, like, you trust the system. It, it you know, it, it has a promise, right? It, and it'll complete that, right? So right. it's, it, it'll, um, and GetOps really takes, you know, like, Kubernetes promise us it'll get things done. And mm-hmm. GetOps, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher this quote because this, yeah, is, yeah, this, is, from, from, yeah. um, the, this is from a talk I heard. And this is a, a Lee from um, a VMware. He said that a GetOps is promises we make to each other. Mm-hmm. Whereas, whereas, you know, from developers and op- operators, they can both look yeah. oh, at a configuration yeah. Yeah. and be like, okay, that's what's in the system currently. Right. And really, that's the power of GetOps, right? Like, they both, you know, both... Um, Dev and ops. Seagull. Yeah, yeah, we, we 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 almost we almost killed the seagull, which is uh, which would have been I think a first. Unpleasant. Yeah, yeah. Well, unpleasant and a first, I think. Right, right, right. Yeah, I don't think we've done that on the show. Yeah, before. yeah, no. Yeah, we did almost kill a goose yesterday. So oh, okay, time, yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, it's it's. Um, so but, it's a uh, theme, I guess, right, right, right. now. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, the birds don't really seem to care about the cars here that yeah. much. Um, but, you know, whatever. Uh, sorry <laughs> to interrupt you with the... Yeah, no, yeah. No, it's like, we had to call that out. Right, it's right. right. <laughs> so it's... Um, yeah, so both, like... So that's why I kind of say it's like, you know, it's DevOps actualized, right? Right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's kind of like... It, it almost makes people work together because there's a single source of truth. Yeah. All, all gr- uh, groups can look at it and say, okay, that's how the system looks like right now. Yeah. And, and can agree on, you know, using Git workflows, right? Ag- agree on what's going to be on the system, right? Because, you know, you, you uh, those that use, like, Git workflows, you know, there's, um, you know, a series of tests and a series of, 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 um, of approvals that need to happen before right. something gets merged. Well, it's one of the, I mean, one of the things I like about it a lot too is like, you know, this is actually one of the reasons I started using Vagrant way back in the day oh, uh-huh. was um, because I know for certain that all the stuff I need to run this application is there because I build it fresh every time, right? Mm-hmm. And I think GitOps, you know, kind of brings that same promise, right, to the yeah. to the system. It's like, you know, so not only am I sure that whatever I'm running in production is what I believe it to be, right? But then on top of that, and kind of getting back to supply chain stuff, which we can talk about in a minute, but it's also the same exact stuff that every other developer has, right? Because I still remember, you know, being like a Windows developer, you know, many years ago and like refusing to take updates because I had no idea when the update would get pushed that would break my my software. Yeah. Um, and, And what's so cool about this, right, is I can actually say, okay, I want version version ABC and I want this there and I want that there. Um, and while you trade off some upgradability or automatic upgradability at the same time, you also know exactly what's shipping. Um, yes, and so, yeah. yeah, I was going to kind of use that as a little bit of a segue into talking about like, uh, the, the fancy new, uh, slang term of S bomb. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> so for the listeners though, uh, so what does S bomb stand for? Yeah, it's, it stands for, um, software build, a build of materials. Right? right. Right. So you get, you got the bomb, right? The right. BOM is build of materials. Now it's just like the software build of materials. Right. Um, and the idea being is that, um, I know exactly is, you know, kind of like a build of materials. I have a list. I know exactly everything that went into a particular piece right. of software. And, and uh, you know, increasingly we're starting to get the ability to ratify that. We're, we're increasingly get the ability to, like, sign off that it yep. is literally true, not just theoretically true, um, which I think is one of the nice things about software that you can't get with a real build material. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. <laughs> you know, well, yeah, like manual inspection <laughs> or something. Yeah, exactly. Well, there, there's there's that aspect of it as well, right? Because you got your, uh, your S-bombs where basically it's... It's just kind of like an inventory mm-hmm. of everything, and this is really useful for um, um, security um, professionals. Right. Yep. Because yep. it's, you know, being secure. That's like it's. I always put it in quotes because it's like it's not like it's not like a north star. 
Right, right. right. Like, yeah. to, to be secure is never to turn on your computer. Yeah, exactly. Right, like, exactly. <laughs> and throw unplug it. Unplug it from the wall. Unplug yeah. it from the wall and throw right. it in the ocean. Right. Like, it's, yeah. it's, it's, um, <laughs> that's like, it's like, le- it's like, um, it's a spectrum, right? It's like, le- mm-hmm. like, how many, how much, really security is how much risk are you willing to bear? Right. And the S-bomb kind of um, tells you, okay, we need to update this piece of software but this piece of software, we can stand, you know, we, we can mitigate that risk somehow, right? We need this particular library for whatever reason, right. and it may have a vulnerability, but we mitigate it in other ways, right? Mm-hmm. So you can make a better decision based on the SBOM. Um, and it just kind of just tells you where, where it is. And another aspect of it is um, to sign um, particular things, right? Right. So like, there's like a, um, you know the whole trust but verify sort of thing. It's like yeah, okay, yeah. like you have at S bomb, that's fine. But how do I how do I verify that it's that it's there as well? So there's that other aspect of signing your S bombs, right? Or, or signing right. particular things, right? Like either like libraries or packages or container images, for example, where it's like you can verify, like okay, even though it may be vulnerable, at least I know that vulnerability is there. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, I mean, I think a lot of uh, particularly like on the development side of the house, right? Don't you know, a lot of people don't realize um, how much uh, kind of signing security or whatever is involved in most package managers. Yes. You know, it's uh-huh. like like everything that you're getting has been like verified six ways from Sunday yep. um, to actually be what it claims to be. That doesn't mean it doesn't have any bugs, but it, you do know for certain yep. that it is what it claims to, to be. be. Yeah. Right. At, at the very least, right? right. You know, it is, is exact. I'm getting exactly what they say that I'm getting. Right. And with, I think one of the things that um, people also, like I said, often don't realize, right, is with the containerization of the world or whatever, um, we're getting a lot less, um, th- there's a lot more models of like software delivery now uh, that are a lot more kind of open-ended. Mm-hmm. Um, and so making sure that we have kind of generic tools like the SBOM kind of push yeah. um, to verify we know exactly what is in there and provable um, is really, really useful because we don't, we can't just rely on like a Linux package manager anymore. It's yes. not enough. Yeah, it's not uh, enough. Yeah. Right. Because we have all these other models for doing development um, or deployment, really. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah. And, and, and it goes beyond, you know, it's, it's like the whole ecosystem, right? Like you mm-hmm. said, like Linux packages. Um, you know, whether you're using like um, like DNF, right, like RPMs or, right. or Debian packages, um, you know, those are signed, but you also have like things like like NPM, right? Like I think mm-hmm. NPM, <laughs> that that whole um, Left thing, bad. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So like that that whole thing, I think brought. I mean, if if it wasn't like security wasn't on everyone's mind before, it was definitely right, after. Right. It seemed like after that incident, everyone's like, whoa, like yeah. Yeah, maybe we shouldn't just like be downloading packages from npm. Even like it's because it's just a repository, right? Right. Like we, we don't necessarily know what goes in that. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, the one for me really was open SSH, right? Um, oh, was, what, yeah. Whatever. Which I can't remember. That what, was. Yeah. Was that yeah. Heart bleed? I can't remember which one. It was. I think that was a bash one. But yeah, yeah I, I know uh, what you're yeah. talking about. It's, but it, yeah, it was a while it back. It was one of the yeah, and and realizing like. 95% of the internet infrastructure is reliant on this one piece of software yeah. that has no like financial support. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, um, you know, I always like, I'm always kind of unhappy with Red Hat for the amount of uh-huh. money they actually put into like Python, for example. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's like uh, th- it's so much of Linux relies on Python, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and it's like, and, but it's kind of like in the background. And so you're always like, Ah, eh, it'll be fine. And then you find out, you know, like the like, open the stage, you're like, nope, nope, nope. Um, it, 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 it wasn't we'll, fine. We'll yeah. pause for the goose. Yeah, we'll yeah. pause for the goose here. We have uh, <laughs> goose crossing. Yeah, goose crossing here, <laughs> which is um, it's interesting that they don't fear. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> there's yep, no, nothing. there's no fear. Yep. Which kind of makes me happy because it makes me feel that people actually do pause for right, that. Right, yeah. exactly, consistently. Um, yeah. But at the same time, they're geese and everyone knows they're mean. So, yeah, exactly. You know. So it's, yeah, yeah. 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 give yeah. and it's, take. It's actually really funny. At uh, Boston University, there's um, the, like, uh, student union, like, where, you know, where all the food is and all that stuff, uh, uh-huh. or one of the many uh, places. Um, so... Boston, like most of, you know, the north of the U.S. has periodically a lot of geese. Uh-huh. Um, so so there's all these flocks of geese that will randomly wander around. But we also have, and this is in the middle of downtown Boston, right? Yeah. Um, turkeys, wild turkeys. And wild turkeys are also not particularly nice. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> both, there will be clusters of both outside the student union. 
oh. on the regular. And basically, you have now it, it, stopped all these students from yeah. like eating because yeah. they can't get in the building. It's it's like both funny and sad. Yeah, and sad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so going going back to get offs a little bit. Um, the one of the things that I think is really interesting about it is like you know trying to you know kind of like Kubernetes does is you're trying to model these things in terms of you know what you want the state to be, mm-hmm. um, and that's a that's a really different way of thinking, and I think it's hard for you know people to wrap their head around. Um, what what do you kind of recommend, or how do you tell how do you talk to people about you know when they're first wanting to look at GitOps and maybe and I think DevOps is also not terribly well understood by yeah, a lot of people yeah yeah um you know, uh, and just, you know, shout out, go read The Phoenix Project if you haven't. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, it's a, it's a great little fictional book that uh, really talks about DevOps and explains it well. Um, but what do you kind of tell people? How do they, like, wrap their head around this stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, you kind of touched on it a little bit. It's really, you know, people are hearing GitOps, right? And it's obviously, but it's it's purposely a buzz buzzword, right? right it's like right. earwormy, right? Yeah. Like, it, yeah. it, it's even, it's so bad that, like, it just sticks with you. Um, <laughs> but the, um, uh, I always say just, like, start looking at your culture because, like, Conway's Law always comes into play, right? Yeah. Because yep. it's, it's, like, too many people try to, like, use a system in order to fix something versus, right, like fixing a culture or fixing a process. Where, yeah, yeah. Whereas, like, first you need to fix the process in order to take advantage of, of the system. But, right, um, right. you know, it, it, it really, um, but that doesn't mean you don't, can't take advantages of some of what GetOps offers you, right? Even even without the cultural shift. Yeah, yeah even yeah, without yeah, the cultural yeah. shift, right? A, lo- yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the times, uh, GetOps starts at the um, operation level. Mm-hmm. Whereas, um, you know, now you have, like, a ton of, you know, before, you know, in the world, you'd have, like, a bunch of Kubernetes, uh, sorry, a bunch of VMs everywhere, right? Right. Like, you'd have VMs sprawl yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Well, now you have, like, cluster sprawl with Kubernetes, yeah. right? Like, so you kind of, you know, you, you, you switch one, you know. Yeah, uh, trade trade one, one evil for another. One, one yeah. evil for another. Well, now, now you have that, that massive sprawl, and it starts with, um, with administrators really wanting to be able to uh, manage... Um, clusters at scale, mm-hmm. and you know, again, you know, making sure they're all consistent, and making sure everything's in the in the way that you want it to. Similarly to what we had, like with you know, Puppet, Ansible, right, that sort of thing. Well, but I think what people often don't realize, right, is like um, we get much higher like utilization rates out of you know any particular piece of hardware using something like containers, yes, rather than yeah. using VMs. The thing is, is that what we also end up with is a lot more of them, just like in count. Um, yep. And yep. so as a result, you know, at scale now, you know, it's it's possible, right, for a single, like, admin to manage, you know, 80 machines, you know, VMs or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, but when you talk about moving all that software to containers, you've just turned it into a thousand. You yeah, know, and yeah. Like, exponentially it, it, grows. Right, yeah. it, just, it just blows up. Yeah. And if you're not using these kinds of systems, it's just, it's untenable, right? Like, yeah, it's you, just no way. You, you could hire all day and you still won't fix it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's a I think that's a good way to try to talk about the story. It's just like you're trying to wrap your head around what's actually going on, you know? and, and trying and trying to manage something, right? Right? right and trying right. to you know, the, the um, you know organizations are constantly, and I guess now especially nowadays, trying to do more with less, right? 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 The, 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 they want to grow, but you know they can't. You can't just like hire your way out of it a lot right. of the times either, right? Mm-hmm. Like there's that that aspect of it. There's the um, you know the uh, I'm going to butcher this this quote as well. I'm butchering yeah. quotes, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, so like that, that's the well, thing right now. Yeah. But it's we it's, haven't had a lot of coffee. So okay, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's it's pretty early in the morning, especially right. for me. My <laughs> my jet lag. Right. Um. You know they they say you know like uh, three pregnant women doesn't make the baby come out in three months. Right. 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 right like yeah, exactly. adding more resources and and there's actually a law like you know one of those Conway laws um, you know Moore's laws I forget what that's yeah, called but like yeah. adding more resources doesn't necessarily mean things are going to go faster yeah yeah I can't think of it either. and so yeah. you need to find out like different ways to um, do more with less right like right. you and you know that's, the organizations are demanding uh, these things and um, you know the uh, uh, necessities of mother invention so that's why like all these tools things like Argo things like Flux right things like Kubernetes came out because it's like okay well we need to start Utilizing our resources better, starting, um, you know, manage these resources better and starting to do, you know, try to grow with what we already have. Mm -hmm. Right. Totally. Yeah. And and one of the things I want to like, I always like to be careful of is that, you know, we often will say, you know, do more with less or whatever. um, But like 
this is not necessarily an opportunity to reduce your workforce. It's no, more uh-uh. like your your scale of things to be managed is growing kind of exponentially. Mm-hmm. And so you're really just trying to do more with the same, you know? Yes. And that's yeah. and, and so I, I, I like to kind of clarify that because I think uh, like particularly, you know, you take executives or whatever, they look at this as like, here's an opportunity to save some money. Well, that's not quite what we mean. No, what that's not quite, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's more like what we want to do is increase the resilience of yeah. the stuff you're paying for already. That way you already have. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it's a, an important like distinction, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. It, so. it, exa- it's a very important <laughs> distinction. Yeah. Right. We say, and, and that's like the, uh, the phrase, like more with less. Right, but right. We don't necessarily mean that, right? Like, well, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, it, what it means is like, like you said, is the, um, the ability to scale with what you already have. Right, right. Yeah. And, and, you know, so I actually talk about this with my students uh, a fair amount when I explain like various um, development methodologies is that mm-hmm. waterfall is actually a lot cheaper than agile, yes, right? Because yeah. you know exactly what you're getting into. You can plan for it. You scale it. To, you know, you do it one time. Um, so when you go to agile, you're not going to sa- be saving money. Most likely, what you're doing is getting higher quality output. Yes, um, yeah. and and like you know, I think that's one of the things that's a, one of those traps when people who've never actually developed software are trying to manage like software teams is they they don't really understand the the weirdness that is software development. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and and also uh, you know, kind of just playing off the the waterfall thing. It's it's not, and we we always. Um, demonize waterfall also as well yeah and yeah. it's not necessarily a bad thing right right, right. like it, yeah. it's, it's just another methodology right it's just an, another way of well and um, if you if, doing if it's a if it's the right kind of environment it makes yeah. a lot of sense like I, even, of sense. Yeah. I give the example to students is like you know there's like embedded software uh you know is often a good use case for waterfall because yes. yep. you know exactly what you need in that cell tower right yes, exactly uh, yeah you know, um but when you're trying to build you know the the one who really brought it to the forefront i think think of at least is mm. um gmail when it was it was in beta for like 10 years for like 10 years yeah, yeah you needed um, an invite i remember that right and yeah. so um you know and and the idea that you know i don't know if they were intentionally doing this but like you know at least for me it was like yeah the idea here is that we're perpetually evolving it we're not um you know we we don't know when it's going to be done yeah you know? yeah yeah exactly um, we don't know we it, it's you know if it's, it's always in beta yeah exactly exactly so i think that's a, a, a kind of an interesting but you know, often lost distinction Um, Mm -hmm. because I think all of us as, you know, who do this stuff, we kind of know it instinctually because it's the nature of our work. Yeah. yeah. Right. But if you come from the, a little bit from the outside, it's a lot less obvious. Um, So I had a a conversation with, uh, you know, in one of these other interviews with, uh, I think I was talking to Katie Mm -hmm. Kamanji and she mentioned a thing that will horrify you. Uh, (laughs) Have you heard of, have you heard of sheet ops? No, no. This is okay. managing your infrastructure with a spreadsheet. Oh man! And using okay. that yeah. to get to Kubernetes YAML. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh man! I was like, <laughs> plausible. That, totally, plausible. To- totally can see people doing this. Um, but uh, I thought, I thought you in particular. Yeah, I'm, I'm morbidly curious. I'm like, yeah, I actually right, want to see right, it. I'm, I'm right. actually intrigued. I'm yeah, like, I, I actually I want to see it. I need to go action. like look it up. Yeah. Um, but uh, I haven't had a chance yet because I think it's it's both horrifying and you know kind of interesting. You know, kind of interesting. Yeah, right. kind of interesting interface. Right. I right. think which is it's kind of weird. Where I mean, I know we're going a um, little off topic on here. Is I think it's That's kind what of what we do. Yeah, yeah, it's what we do. It's yeah. just yeah, it's all organic. What, what it's kind of interesting how like um, Microsoft Office, um, like really Excel became the king, where yeah. where everyone thought that it was going to be like like a Word document, right? But now like now well now we have like Google Sheets, right? Yeah. And it's but like it's same idea, right? Like everyone lives in a in a spreadsheet nowadays for whatever right, reason. Right, right, um, yeah. Which like it, it's it, it's one of those things. It's because it's so easy to start something in a spreadsheet, right? Yes, yeah, and yeah. then and then all of a sudden you have this horribly uh, yeah, yeah, crazy horribly thing, thing right? yeah. and uh, and you're like, oh, I should just start it with a database. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, uh, you know, to be honest, right? Like this is actually one of the things I miss the most about the like like kind of the lack or at least seeming lack of the easy availability of Microsoft Access. Um, oh, Access, yeah, 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 because you used to be able to just like start a thing as easily as you did in a spreadsheet, yeah. but you could do it actually in a database, even if it was a relatively lightweight database. Um, and uh, 
and, and so it's kind of funny that that's kind of fallen off, and instead now we have everyone building databases and, and spreadsheets. And, and spreadsheets, right. yeah. Oh, you know, I've seen some spreadsheets where it's like, man, this this should have just been an uh, access. Like, I would rather have them use an access, yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, like it's something you know. Yeah, at something least that was built a little bit more it. sense. Yeah. At least you know, uh, you know, one of the really uh, uh, like phrases that came out of the Ruby community that I really appreciate is uh, you know dry. Yeah, um, yeah. You uh-huh. know, don't, you know, don't repeat, repeat yourself. yourself. Yeah. Um, and that's the problem with the spreadsheets, right? Is like it's just so not, it's so wet, right? Yeah, it's, it's so, so yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's so um, it's not dry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it, I just thought I was I was like, as you say, right, truly horrified, but at the same time morbidly curious. Morbidly curious, <laughs> yeah. absolutely um, morbidly curious. <laughs> but uh, so I have to go check that out. Um, so talking a little bit about Argo and uh, GitOps, um, mm-hmm. you actually posted some content to Cube by Example about this, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I uh, Cube by Example didn't have an Argo module, so mm-hmm. um, I ended up um, contributing. Cube by example, uh, and now now there's a uh, I don't know what you guys call it track learning path learning, learning path. path. Now yeah. there's a path for for um, for Argo CD, mm-hmm. and so I I always like the uh, the analogy of of um, I don't know if you ever heard Eric Jacobs' analogy of a, a plane crashing. No, I don't think I've ever heard this. So and, I'll, uh, I'll I'll tell you we his. Both, we both used to work for Eric yeah, Jacobs. So, yeah. yeah. So so he has this analogy, and I actually just took it and simplified. So I'll I'll tell I'll tell you uh, his, mm-hmm. and I'll tell you mine. Because mine's less horrifying, but he's, <laughs> he's, he said that I- imagine um, you know you're in an airplane and like the um, the pilots all pass out for whatever reason, right? Uh-huh. It's like the movie Airplane, right? right. Maybe they ate bad fish. Yeah. Um, and um, you know you have to you know you're in the cockpit. Um, a manual for the cockpit is absolutely useless to you, right? Because it, there's nothing in there. It, it tells you what every little gadget does. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in there that tells you how to land a plane, right? Right. So my analogy is is I actually bought a Vitamix. Um, oh yeah, yeah, the blender. blender. Yeah, yeah, fantastic, love yeah. it. Yeah, um, and it came it came with a manual that it has actually a pretty extensive manual um, that tell you like what all the buttons do and yeah. you know how to like set it up and everything. Um, that's great, right? But it also came with a manual on how to make a smoothie. Right, like, it gave you right. recipes, right? Right. So this is kind of like the approach I took with. Um, uh, with uh, the learning path yep. for Argo City, right? I basically take you from zero to smoothie. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's essentially right. Like I, like you go, like I, I, you know, zero to hero. But now I'm zero yeah, to I'm, smoothie. I, that's my new catchphrase, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> zero yeah. to smoothie, yeah. where I try to uh, just um, basically take you from zero. You have no knowledge of anything, um, and then you know, at the very end, you get uh, um, something that you can use. So. Right, right. Oh, that's cool. That's uh, yeah. That, that's one of the things. Um, that I always have struggled with with development teams is like mm-hmm. when I, you know, had a development team, I've even been doing it with my students when they're working on projects is like, okay, I want you to describe how the thing works, but I also want a document that tells, that tells someone how to add the next feature, you know, because yes. uh-huh. like, where does it go? You know, or yeah. if you wanted, you know, you have all these ideas for what the project could be in the future, you know, how, where would you put those, you know, or where would you start to think about putting those? Because you, you have an idea when you think of this about what, how you would do it. So explain that in the documentation, because that is as useful to the next team yes. as like how the thing currently works. Um, yeah, so, but that's, I, I like I said, zero to smoothie, that's really good. Uh, my Vitamix, by the way, uh, has yeah. uh, two buttons. Uh, there's on and off. Oh, on and off. off. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Um, and, Mine uh, has, like, all these knobs. And, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> we just, yeah, I have one of the, like, old school ones. Um, <laughs> and uh, what, the one thing I'm really looking for, though, is, and maybe yours has this, but I want to, uh, another, I, I don't know what you call them, but, like, you know, the part that holds all the stuff. Um but oh, uh, uh-huh. I want one of uh, like I want another attachment for it that yeah. I could actually make a smaller amount, you know, so like oh, make a smoothie yeah. kind of except yeah, for like yeah. one person because some because it's, like it's like a bowl. you can buy yeah. like just yeah. the you know the little piece um, because I actually use it for sauces a lot and I it's uh, often too big yeah, for yeah. the amount of sauce awesome. I'm making yeah, you know because yeah. I'm <laughs> I'm not actually cooking in a restaurant right I'm yeah just, yeah exactly it's yeah just for my family of five yeah it's like I'm, I'm not I'm not serving a whole restaurant <laughs> right yeah, exactly. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, I really like the Vitamix too. Ours, luckily, was uh, kind of a hand-me-down from uh, my mother-in-law. Ah. So uh, they're such a good quality because yeah. you can essentially just like pass it on to the next <laughs> right, generation. Exactly. Um, it's uh, yeah, it's been it's been great. I've been using it a lot more lately, actually. Um, yeah, to the um, and actually to to the point of of, of 
of documentation, right? Yeah. You were talking about um, that's that's something I think um, with like fast moving software, that's something that like I think we could all use a lot of help on. Mm-hmm. Um, especially like I'm 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 the type of person where like I need to see it work mm-hmm. first, right? In order to intelligently navigate the documentation, right, 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 because yeah, yeah. it's sometimes, and I don't mean this disparagingly, but yeah. sometimes I'll read documentation. And I go, oh, this was written by an engineer, right? Yeah, right, be, right. Be, because yeah. I have no idea what's going on, right? Um, right. Yeah, that's, I, I, that's why I really like those um, the things that uh, you know. There's a lot of people doing now, but like um, uh, code, uh, code something code. I'm blanking on what it is, uh-huh. but it's uh, you know it's where you have the like documentation on the left, and then you can like try it on the right. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think uh, there, uh, Katakoda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there's Katakoda. I think Instruct does it now. Yeah, yeah. Well. And, yeah. And, but it's kind of at least for me, it gives me that same, at least some of that same feel. I I would also like an overview first. Yes. Uh, as yeah. you're kind of saying, um, but the uh, you know kind of that interactive documentation I think is much more useful to me. Um, I don't know. It's it's interesting. I don't know if it's um, the type of people who are attracted to working in tech, you know, as software engineers or admins or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, like consistently, I've found that most of them learn better by doing something hands on. Um, and I don't know if it's like the particular brain type that is attracted to working in tech is also the brain type that's attracted to you know or learns yeah. by doing. Learns by doing. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know because you know I I'm sure there are other ways of thinking you know um you know i just don't think that way yeah but like okay. you know so but it's interesting how consistent i found it to be uh among sure. tech people yeah for sure all right well we're just about out of time uh thanks so much christian we really appreciate no, thank your time. you yeah had, had fun uh, uh hopefully you had a nice little tour of belle isle yeah it was um, nice yeah it's pretty out there right yeah. i mean it's a little gray today but it was it was much prettier yesterday um but uh yeah thanks again for having us yeah no thank you